Hello, hello to all of you, my organic farming enthusiasts, and welcome back to yet another video on our tiny garden. Here, we are always dedicated to the science and the art of organic farming. So we are wrapping up on our series on homemade fertilizers and we shall do that by understanding plant nutrition. It's very important for us to understand the different nutrients that are required by the plant and also get to understand how the plant communicates with us when there's a deficiency in a particular nutrient. Nutrients required for plant growth are divided into two main categories. That is the macronutrients and the micronutrients. The macronutrients are further divided into two, that is the primary macronutrients and the secondary macronutrients. In this video, we are going to take a deep dive into understanding the primary macronutrients that are needed by plants. So these are the typical NPK that everybody understands, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. These three nutrients are relatively needed by plants in very large quantities for their growth and development. So first up is nitrogen. Nitrogen is a crucial component of amino acids, proteins, chlorophyll, and nucleic acids. That is the DNA and the RNA. Therefore, nitrogen is essential for plant growth, leaf development, and overall metabolic functions. The symbol P stands for phosphorus. Phosphorus is involved in energy transfer and storage as ATP, cell division, and the formation of nucleic acid. Therefore, phosphorus plays a crucial role in root development, flowering, and fruiting. Finally, the symbol K stands for potassium. Potassium is important for the activation of enzymes, osmoregulation, that is regulating water balance, and photosynthesis. Potassium contributes to disease resistance and overall plant vigor. Plants will always communicate to us when there's a deficiency of a particular nutrient. For instance, if there's a deficiency of nitrogen, one of the most common signs that you will see is the yellowing of the older leaves. This starts from the tips and spreads towards the base. This is because nitrogen is a mobile nutrient within the plant. And when it becomes deficient, the plant mobilizes nitrogen from older leaves to support the growth of newer leaves. In addition to yellowing of older leaves, you will also observe stunted growth, delayed maturity, reduced leaf size, and then you will also see a pale green color indicating a lack of chlorophyll. Some of the organic sources of nitrogen-rich fertilizers are compost, fish hydrolysate fertilizer. I have made a video on how to make your own fish hydrolysate fertilizer and well-decomposed animal manure. We also have feather meal. Yes, there's a fertilizer that is just made out of feathers. We also have alfalfa meal and we can also plant cover crops like legumes that are able to fix atmospheric nitrogen. Next up is phosphorus and here we have a phosphorus deficient leaf. So one of the major signs that you will see in a phosphorus deficient plant is that the leaves will start to have a purple discoloration or they will have a very dark green depending on the type of the plant. In addition to the purplish discoloration of the leaves, you will also notice stunted growth, delayed maturity, you will see a reduced flower and fruit production, and you will also see some leaf curling and distortion. Some of the organic sources of phosphorus include bone meal, rock phosphate, fish hydrolysate fertilizer, alfalfa meal, and well decomposed chicken manure. Finally, we also have guano, which is just accumulated excrements of seabirds or birds. Finally, we have potassium. And the symptoms of a potassium deficient plant will start with the older leaves first, and the leaves here will become chlorotic. This means that they will start producing insufficient chlorophyll, and then later on they will become necrotic, meaning they will start dying. And they start dying at the leaf margins. Apart from the leaf margin browning or scorching, you will also observe leaf curling, stunted growth, poor fruit development, your stems are going to be very very weak and plants that are deficient of potassium have an increased susceptibility to diseases. Some of the organic sources of potassium rich fertilizers are banana peels, wood ash, seaweed and kelp, comfrey, manure, compost and fish hydrolysate fertilizer. 
In the next video, we are going to be looking at the secondary macronutrients that plants need in smaller quantities, that is calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you found this video to be informative, please do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and share this video with anybody who might be interested in this kind of content. Until the next video, happy gardening!